alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in. Ramadan is like holding up a mirror and seeing your true raw self. It's the month where we get to know ourselves for who we really are. Think about it like this with me. If the shayateen are locked up, then whatever good or bad we do this month is actually a reflection of our own selves. The bad is obvious. If we're still engaged in bad in Ramadan, it's a struggle that we need to work on all year long to really eradicate that haram from our system. But I also said good. Why? Because sometimes even in the good that we do, sometimes our intention aren't purely for the sake of Allah alone. Like thinking, I wonder if people will think I'm a good person because I'm doing this good deed. But that's the whisperings of shaitan to throw you off course. But Ramadan, in Ramadan, the shaitan aren't here, so we can't blame them. And if the whisperings are still there, then it may just be our lower base self, the nafs, talking. And in this series, we've been defining Ramadan in many different ways. So let's review together. We've called Ramadan the month of patience, the month of little food and little drink, the month of the Quran, the month of charity. But we also need to add a very important description as well, that this is the month where we get to know our true selves without any shayateen present. It shows us our true selves, our strengths, but also our weaknesses, what we overdo and where we underperform and where we need some extra help. And Ramadan comes back once a year, every year to put us back in check, like a training camp to bring us back to our true selves, to show us how to take care of our mind, body, and soul. Because think about it, fasting helps us regulate our physical appetites. It stretches our endurances to new height. It teaches us that we can do without a whole lot of things that we convinced ourselves we absolutely need. And if we do Ramadan right, our mind is also stretched to new limits, especially if we're engaging in meditative contemplation, tafakkur, or pondering on the meanings of the Quran or the meaning of life, tadabbur. And all of these are central practices within the artikaf, the spiritual seclusion, the Prophet وسلم, so ardently held on to in Ramadan and outside of it. In Ramadan, the soul can be bathed and cleansed and purified like we discussed previously. And a real deep connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can form with no shayateen interfering. And there's no way that that relationship or connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain the same or stagnant if we really strive to connect with Allah this Ramadan. Now look, the concept of mind, body, and soul was so perfected by early Muslims. Can I share with you a project I've been working on that proves how Muslims were so ingenious at perfecting the mind, body, soul connection from the very beginning of Islam? And you know how I know? The very institutions that they built that reflected this very holistic mind, body, soul connection that no people in history before them had ever created anything similar. And for the last nights of the series, you've been looking at this background and this logo behind me that says Maristan. The picture, in case you're wondering, is actually of a Maristan in Syria. Maristan is a shortened name for Bimaristan. Maristan in Farsi or even Urdu translates into the place of healing for the ill person. Very similar to the phrase in Arabic, Daru Shifa, or the place of healing. The Maristans were these holistic healing treatment centers, hospitals, where someone who was not feeling well in any of the domains, mind, body, or soul, can go to to get help and reprieve. I took a personal interest in Maristans because as a physician myself, in my opinion, the Maristans were the pinnacle of our Islamic heritage. It's what I call the proof in the pudding. And you all know how much. I care deeply about mental health. Well, did you know that in Islamic civilization, they were the very, we were the very first in history of all of mankind to incorporate mental health treatment into our hospitals? And the very first of these hospitals showed up right after the advent of Islam and the next generation after the Prophet So we shouldn't be so surprised when we learn that Muslims were the first in history to have psychiatric institutions of healing and treatments in their hospitals. Why? Because of that mind, body, soul connection. Because that's holistic healing as taught by Islam. That is why I chose to name my new organization, Madistan, to revive that amazing and beautiful heritage of Islam that was all encompassing. You'll find Madistans all over the Muslim world. Along with the advances they had in medicine and physical health, the Madistan were also home to astounding advancements in psychological health. 
like talk therapy. Yes, I just said talk therapy. Muslims were some of the first, if not the first, to create talk therapy. Music and sound therapy, aromatherapy, somatic therapies, medications, the list goes on. All of this to help treat those with mental health conditions. It's a lost legacy that we need to revive, especially the fact that these healing institutions were accessible to all who needed help. And this was made possible by the endowment system, the awqaf, the waqf that people would have for their families and pledge to support this kind of treatment and work. So basically generous donors who wanted their sadaqa jariya or their ongoing charity to be in the domain of healing. And I really hope some who are listening will be willing to put some of their charitable funds into these endowment systems for mental health in our communities here. And what further amazes me that the early Muslims didn't have stigma against mental health. You know how I know? Because they dedicated sakat funds to cover the cost of treatment for those in need. Now you don't do that if something is stigmatized. I hope inshallah that you'll hope that you will choose to help us revive this tradition by helping us establish endowments for mental health through Maristan. Whether it be by donating some of your zakat, funds to cover the cost of sessions for fellow community members so that they can tap into holistic mental health care, or whether it's supporting our mission of research backed by my lab at Stanford University, the Muslim Mental Health and Islamic Psychology Lab, or by supporting the education and trainings that we've been hard at work to train community leaders, student leaders, and especially our religious leaders and imams on evidence-based best practices that fully integrate the latest mental health guidelines, but are firmly grounded in Islamic understanding and principles. My goal is to bring back authentic tradition that we have trust and confidence in. We at Madison aim to recompass mental health treatment to its true beginnings, like our noble Muslim predecessors. So please do consider supporting us at madison.org. Let us revive our beautiful Islamic heritage together once more. Let us bring to ourselves and our communities holistic healing practices. Let us reorient ourselves back to that holistic mind, body, soul connection. And let's use Ramadan to dive deeper into all three arena, arenas of our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from me and you this month. May we be showered by his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness and brought closer to him this month. May our fasting and our prayers and our Quran reading and our dua and our charity all be accepted this month. And may we exit this month of Ramadan completely purified and cleansed like the day our mothers bore us. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ajma'in. This is your sister, Dr. Rania Awad, signing off. Assalamu alaikum wa